opinion. Is it a good idea? <laughs> what? That's what they told us. Yeah, they didn't tell me anything. <laughs> Yes, I think it's a very good idea because it's supposed to be healthier, cleaner, and it has nothing to do with your sexual potency at all. I, I, I really don't think so. <laughs> no child was ever asked whether they should be vaccinated or whether they should have inoculations for anything. So if they're circumcised, they're circumcised. Right. But why? $200 million a year, and we do it more than any other developed country. Why is that? Is it because it's part of the Judeo-Christian uh, it, It's certainly tradition. part of the Judeo-religious tradi uh, tradition. What? Boy, I got all kinds of energy out here for circumcision. This ought to be good. But... I'm against it because my son was um, locally uh, given some medicine, and he was screaming and screaming and screaming, and I couldn't get into him, so I'm against it. When he came out, I thought he was a basket case. How old was he? Six he, months. Six months. <laughs> yeah, you got an opinion on it? <laughs> yes, I was circumcised. Had nothing to do with it, but they now say it's healthier just to leave it uncircumcised. Leave it like it is. If a parent doesn't get their kids circumcised, they have a possibility of having a disease ten years later. Who told you that? <laughs> if God wanted us not to have foreskin, we would have been born. Or if, you know what I mean? The foreskin is supposed to be a very fertile breeding ground for bacteria. So it's supposed to be very healthy to have, it, have a circumcision. Isn't it true that nature takes its course eventually, whether you're circumcised or not? I think it uh, just... Uh, so you're for it or against it? Well, I'm a, a for it, really. <laughs> Uh, Marilyn, get in this. You are Marilyn uh, Milos, an RN, and you are founder and d founding director of No Circ, the National Organization for of Circumcision Information Resource Centers, ahem, a nonprofit. Or you're against it. I am against it. When I first had my son circumcised, I didn't know what, what the procedure was. I had no idea what they were going through. And when I went to nursing school, I saw the procedure for the first time. And I was shocked and horrified by what I saw. To see a baby strapped down to a plastic board and have part of his penis cut off without an anesthetic was horrible. Hang and, on a minute. And during, let me just finish, Phil. During that procedure, the doctor said there's no medical reason for doing this. And I couldn't believe what I heard. And How much I, was it? Do you remember? It was 50 bucks. I, I have think. no idea. I don't you, know. It was many years ago. Are you there, caller? Yes, I am. You, what do you think? Hello? Go ahead. Yes, I was married to a man that was not circumcised. And... The end result is now. Uh, end result. Is uh, this was divorce. The end uh, result is what? The end result was that sex was not really pleasurable, um, because. I don't know if I want you to tell us because. Uh, uh, it was uncomfortable for you. Um, yeah, it takes a long time for a man to ejaculate when he's not circumcised. Number one. Uh, number two, oral sex is not um is not really uh really great uh meaning that there's a whole lot of european women who wouldn't agree with that at all to, uh, say again miss there's a whole lot of european women who wouldn't agree with you at all can you see your tv set yes i have it turned down though that's all right you don't have to maybe it's a good idea that it's turned down this <laughs> what he said that the doctor does the circumcision and when in fact often it's interns and residents yes, it and that's the reason why I'm against it because uh, you, don't it's, you don't know who is doing it and how skilled they are and even doctors who are supposedly skilled are not necessarily so there's, on the totem pole, there's you know blood what? loss uh, it's uh, certainly invasive and in an age when we're wondering about uh, what's out there there's uh, also a lot of sexual male dysfunction because of circumcision. Richard Steiner was circumcised as a child and reversed the procedure in adulthood. They can do that now. It can be done. It can and you're done. a happier man now that you've... Uh, what, what do you call this? Decircumcision? Or? No, it's called, it's called a foreskin <laughs> restoration procedure. Foreskin restoration. And uh, yes, I am much happier. I am functioning normally, whereas I was dysfunctional for 31 years. Um, all right, I'm, uh, Mr. Steiner, I want your story, but let me just uh, here at the outset say that we do have a tape of a, of a circumcision. Uh, bris, what do you want to call this? 
Well, it's uh, a bris if it's the religious. If it's a if, religious. If it's not in a hospital, it's just the circumcision surgery. Are there any Jews on this panel? Mm -hmm. I am. You are. Uh, what, if any, uh, religious uh, conviction do you bring to this? Well, I'll tell you something. Do you you are Dr. Uh, Dean Idell, MD. You're a syndicated medical journalist mm -hmm. with whom I'm sure a number of our viewers are familiar. Go ahead, sir. Basically, the religious issue is a difficult one. Um, but, you know, as Jews, we don't slaughter a lamb at Passover and get blood on the tablecloth. We eat a lamb chop. And this ritual is changing. And there are uh, brisses that are done without making the actual cut. This is a covenant that was made with God who said, if you're going to be a Jew, you have to be circumcised. Plain and simple. Uh, it is identified. Incidentally, the National, uh, the Pediatric Association, what do they call these people? The American Academy of... Pe of American Academy of Pediatrics... <laughs> Does not, what are they, are they neutral? In, in 1975, it? they came out with a statement that said there is no absolute medical indication for routine circumcision of the newborn. In 1984, they wrote a little pamphlet called Care of the Uncircumcised Penis, and in it they talked about the function of the foreskin, that it's a normal, healthy part of the body, and that when you remove it, there, it can cause problems that never occur in uncircumcised babies. Also so it is contraindicated to the health of the child. Marilyn, didn't the College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists also come Yes, and it, along with the American... Um, what are they doing in this uh, argument it's anyway? It's amazing. They train to learn about the female genital system, and they do most of the circumcisions. OBGYN people do, mm -hmm. because they deliver the baby. They obviously. deliver the baby. It's part of the, the plan, the yeah. service. There's an interesting uh, point here, Phil. When a baby is born, and some babies are, this happens rarely, without a foreskin, it's a condition called apostia, on the birth certificate, th they have to write, uh, the child was born with a birth defect. So if a child is born with a foreskin, they, the doctors then inflict a defect. Trudy London also joins us. Your son, uh, you had your son circumcised as a child, but you're sorry you did. And you're going to sue somebody, are you? We're in the process right now. We Who have... are you going to sue? Uh, incidentally, wh how, what div uh, how did your conviction evolve? Well, I did not want the circumcision, and my husband did. And I went along with his wishes and took my son in to be circumcised and talked to the doctor a little bit before the surgery. He said it wouldn't hurt, that the nerve end endings were not myelinated, and that uh, there would be no pain. And I... Um, was really was really concerned about the pain and that I couldn't figure out why he would have to have a healthy tissue of his body removed for no medical reason and um, went ahead with the he went ahead with the surgery and then when my son was returned to me he was he was upset he was screaming he was in pain for several days after the surgery and I was shocked and angry and felt lied to and um, I went for three months and then finally someone put me in touch with Marilyn and then I found out the information that I should have had before the surgery, and had I had it, I would not have chosen. Uh, so I think you're suggesting that this is a routine which is done because we've done it because we've done it. Therefore, right. we're going to do it. Exactly. Uh, there is also a fee in this. Let's not, uh, and that obviously has got to be considered at the very least influencing. Here is a videotape of a circumcision. Uh, now, wait a minute. It's not really that. I don't think this is that graphic, but it may not be for everybody. It may not be graphic, Phil, but you might add to the viewers at home that if they're uncomfortable watching it, imagine, imagine what the kid is going through when they force him down and start ripping and tearing at it. Here's the tape. It's not don't you cry. Go to sleepy little baby. This two-day-old infant is about to have an operation that almost all physicians feel is medically unnecessary. <laughs> this is a circumcision. The infant is strapped down, and without any anesthesia, his foreskin is cut away with a scalpel or a pair of scissors. In addition to the obvious discomfort involved, there are now concerns that this routine procedure may actually deprive adult men of a vital part of their sexual sensitivity. Uh, they strapped the kid down. Are you there, caller? Hi. Uh, my husband wasn't circumcised when he was a baby, and he had to have it done at a later date, uh, when he was 28 years old, and it was a lot worse. We went through everything. He, was, he had infections before the circumcision and everything. After it, he was in so much pain. Yeah. Why did he have to have it done? Because he had infections it, under the skin. It, you know, I mean, he washed and everything, but still he had infections. And the doctor said to him, 
you know, you have to be circumcised, and he was in a lot of pain. It's he was true. A, lot of pain a certain weeks. small percentage of men with foreskins will get disease of the foreskin, but you can't just remove everybody's. You can't pull everybody's teeth to avoid cavities. Let's remove breast tissue from little girls so they won't get breast cancer. And so, they don't remove tonsils anymore. Yes, and it's false thinking to, 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 to raise the issue of every once in a while, this does happen. But by the same token, very often it's mistreated because American physicians don't see foreskins. Yeah. We don't know how to treat this effectively sometimes. And the other thing is that that man, your son, had an anesthetic and was given pain medication. He did have problems, granted, but he knew what was happening to him. A baby has none of these advantages. And so while your son could tell you how much this hurt him, the small baby can't tell us how much is, he's hurting. Richard, do you want to do your uh, arts and crafts here? <laughs> um, this is facetious, but <laughs> all right. As briefly as possible. Okay. The procedure that I had to go through, I was sexually dysfunctional. And it did cost me personally. I, um, it was a factor in my divorce, and I sought out um, a foreskin reconstruction procedure. I spent two years going from doctor to doctor, being thrown out of their offices, being laughed out of their offices and told I was crazy. I needed psychiatric help. I finally did two years worth of research and found a doctor who would do the procedure. I went to check him out. I'm employed by an airline so I can travel. Any event, the procedure that was done on me was, if you look at this, this is the circumcised penis. What the doctor does is, he measures from the circumcision scar down to the tip, and then measures again from the circumcision scar back up the shaft, the same amount of, uh, of, of skin, makes an incision all the way around it, and then literally peels that skin down forward, okay? And then he goes into the scrotal sac, he makes two incisions, two horizontal incisions, and creates a tunnel here, okay? From here to here. There's a tunnel that's created. I get it. Okay? And so the, uh, after the foreskin is pulled over the tip of the penis... The new foreskin. The new right. foreskin. Then it's placed in the scrotal sac. It's put in the scrotal sac. For healing purposes. And it's sewn into place, the front half is sewn into place for a period of anywhere from 10 to 16 weeks so that blood veins and arteries can form and it, be, it becomes healthy living tissue. It's not just a yes. dead flap of skin. And how do you pass your urine during that time? This is open down here. He sews this, oh, this opening from here is sewn into this actual... I, I get it. Right there. Okay? <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's like auto... Uh... And then about 16 weeks later, uh, then he comes and goes in and actually lifts the penis out of the... Uh, the and uh, when you talk about sexual dysfunction, I, am, I understand that uh, this included uh, difficulty in ejaculating, is that so? Yes. And, and you believe this is the result of the circumcision? I found out after I had begun a, pro a procedure of non-surgical foreskin restoration whereby I was stretching the skin yeah. up over the tip of the glands and taping it in place. And let me tell you, any man, any woman, any doctor, any rabbi, anyone who tells you there is not any difference in the sensitivity of an uncircumcised glands or circumcised glands does not know what they're talking about. Well, Mr. Steiner, let me just add to that a, a rather right. doctrinaire observation. Uh, I think we have to agree that it varies with individuals. Uh, you want to come in here yes, and help but, me with this? Yes, well, well, let me get Dr. Riddell yes. in here. Of course, a lot of sex is in the head, but the truth of the matter is if we took a microscope and looked at the tip of a circumcised penis, <laughs> there are 15 or 20 cell layers dry like your skin. An uncircumcised penis is like mucous membrane, like the inside of your mouth with one cell layer, and the nerves are closer. So in terms of absolute sensation, um, Richard is right. In terms of the overall feeling of sexuality and what we all deal with, the mind does have a lot to do with it. So obviously not all circumcised men have this problem. That's the Not point. all circumcised men have this problem, but if they got their foreskins back, they would experience a sexual sensation very different and more intense. And if you talk to men who've been circumcised as adults, there's more of them than there are of Richard walking around. Men who have been circumcised as adults describe it afterwards as dull, as like wearing a boxing glove, as uh, I've heard different descriptions. Really? Sensation so you're prepared to put your medical reputation on the line here and say that sex is more fun for uncircumcised males. It, it, there is more of a sensation, more intense Phil, sensation. Let me yes. also say last year during my, between my two procedures, I did a survey in the Los Angeles area and I asked men, and since I have some psychology background, I asked, I put a questionnaire together. Over 400 people responded to that survey 
And the one group that interested me the most was the 36 men who responded to that survey who said that they had had themselves circumcised as adults, they regretted it, they wished they had never had it done, and they wanted it back. And they were willing to spend the money and the time and have it done. Are you there, caller? Go ahead. Yes. Theo? Yeah. My son was circumcised when he was one hour old, and they would not let me go in there to help him. He was screaming his head off, and I didn't know what to do. And the doctor had talked me into having it done in the first place. I was against it until the doctor told me that my son would be an outcast in the gym room and so forth, being uncircumcised, and I had to lay there and watch them do it to him when he was one hour old. Well, that's, uh, that's usually when it happens, isn't it? Well, it's within the first few days of life. Incidentally, I, I made a videotape because when I became a nurse then and worked in an obstetrical unit, I thought it was essential for parents to know what was happening to their babies. I'd heard this story again and again. People who had gone, or had gone, either that or had gone in with their baby, and during the procedure, they understood that, they, that this was a mistake. They wished they hadn't done it. So I thought it was important for parents to see that uh, video. Um, it was censored by the hospital where I worked. They wouldn't allow us to show it. They said it was too much for parents to see. I said, this is, we're talking elective surgery. If it's too much for parents to see, then surely it must be too much for a baby but to experience. You obviously have a political passion about this, both, all of you do. Uh, and then fine, I think, uh, obviously, you're a, you're a, uh, you're for infant rights, isn't that how you want? Absolutely, so absolutely. Infant has a right to their own body to be left alone, not to be meddled with by doctors who think we know everything. We're the people who brought you hysterectomies and tonsillectomies uh, and cesarean sections, and we do lots of unnecessary operations. We don't get the message easily. We don't pass it on to the public, but the public has to know to tell their doctors because this is how we get educated from people who see things, read things, and then they push us, and that's how we change. Are you there, caller? Go ahead. Yes. I'm, a, I'm against circumcision, and I chose not to have my son circumcised. And I think that, that all the problems people say they have about circumcision and, and later being required is because these people sometimes try too hard. The, mm -hmm. the uncircumcised penis of an infant doesn't require any care. If you pull it back and try to clean it, you're going to aggravate it, cause scar tissue, and create problems. Yeah, uh, the panel agrees. I think we're not only violating the infant's rights, I think often we violate the parent's rights. I'm a nurse and I work in a newborn intensive care unit. And when we get a consent form for a surgical procedure, it's not what normally we would consider an informed consent. That's right. Um, we very rarely go into all the complications that are possible. And be careful if you do, because when you begin to go into all the complications and begin to tell parents, the first thing that happens, most parents have thanked me. People stop me on the street and say, gee, thank you for telling me my son's intact and it's because of you. But three parents when I was working complained that I made them feel guilty. My, of course, my answer to that was if they felt good about what they were doing, they wouldn't. But I was eventually fired for attempting it, to give this information. It doesn't occur to most parents to even ask. It's, this is an accept that I had a baby boy, therefore when are you going to do the circumcision? So your hospital, yeah. let me get this straight, your hospital then routinely circumcises? Well, you have to get a consent form. We do ask the parents before we actually do it. But there's no dialogue about it, is no, there? No, there's very little dialogue. The consent form is very simple, straight to the point. It does right. not mention complications at all. What, 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 what would be, just one second, what would be your guess as to the percentage of males born in your hospital that are not circumcised? Not circumcised? Very few. It tends to be a cultural thing in the particular hospital I work. Puerto Ricans very rarely have their sons circumcised. I would say out of all, taking away the Puerto Rican census, um, if you're talking whites, blacks, I would say 90% are circumcised. It's changing. Radically changing. Nationally, it's less than 60% of boys are being circumcised now. One of the things that's interesting as a nurse also, the doctor often goes in and says to the parents, shall we do a little snipping? Shall we trim him? No, we sell it, These euphemisms which is crazy. That, that yeah. Part of the problem is that we are conditioned in this country to believe that being circumcised is normal. And that right. is the problem. Where 85% of the world's male population is not circumcised. We're the only civilized country still doing it. Uh, so she mentioned Puerto Rico. Is it, would, it, would, the, would it be fair to say that the southern part of uh, the northern hemisphere is... Uh, Most of the world, Phil. Most this is the last country to routinely circumcise its babies for without a medical or religious reason. Even Princess Di refused to have her two <laughs> sons circumcised. Uh, even though Prince Charles is purportedly circumcised, 
she would not allow them to do that and got into quite a tiff with the queen from what was reported about it because she wanted yeah. it done. Yeah. What is the usual cost? Uh, what's the, is it 50 bucks? It's oh, 100 bucks, 200. I'm, I, I'll, listen, I'm the first one to accuse my profession of anything they ought to be con uh, accused of. You have I, circumcised um, infant males yourself, have you? I have. My first three were circumcised, my last two were not, and boy, oh boy. <laughs> we're talking family reaction, and it's just a matter They were upset. They saying. were upset. I, I'm Jewish, and I'm not a religious Jew, and I, I think I can speak for many other Jews who know that what I'm about to say is true. We don't go to temple on Saturday. We're not kosher. We don't observe all the laws, but circumcision we cling to tenaciously, I believe, because it's a helpless infant, and it's nothing that we have to do, and we can be very passive about it and feel like we're being good Jews. And we'll be back in just a moment. You believe this? <laughs> There's a list of males who've been, who, who have not been circumcised. Both. Is that right? Both. Both. Famous people. Can you believe this? <laughs> <laughs> They're all on here. Uh, <laughs> don't I have any right to privacy? <laughs> Page two. Alphabetical order. I'm right before Troy Donahue. <laughs> and after Kevin Dobson. <laughs> And they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, this is wrong. Uh, Nobody's asking for when... proof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will say this. When little Philly first saw the light of day, it was routinely done. And I think uh, circumcision was routinely done. And I, I don't, th obviously I can't, I don't speak for all males my age, but I don't think there's any, you're not gonna doubt that most people my age have been. Oh, well, the course. reason I was done is because my father was old country German and was uncircumcised and the reason uh, my mother and the doctor uh, got together and my mother said should this be done and the doctor said yes it's normal it's healthy it's everything else and lo and behold my father was against it but they went ahead and circumcised me and um, it's I mean, done routinely that is the problem nobody I got, asks. I got lots of wisdom out here. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you wouldn't give advice to be circumcised, uh, don't you? Uh, you would I, say you was not. I would, would, I, would I give advice? Yeah. I'll tell you this. We've done this would program. Would you give advice to me, sir? I, would, I, uh, I, would not give I wouldn't presume to give you advice. It looks what? like you've come a long way without my advice. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Let me, get, let me get a woman in here, but just somebody who hasn't had a shot. Yes, ma'am. I have three sons, and it was routinely done. They were all born in the 60s, right. and I never heard of anyone that wasn't so I never did either. There are very few. That's only in this country, by the way. That's yeah. only in this country. Everybody yeah. on the panel seems to be talking about the physical pain that these kids... Is there any emotional pain or, you know, or long-term psychological that's pain? That's been addressed, and it's very difficult. There, there's going to be a paper presented in two weeks, uh, the American Prenatal Psychology Association. Imagine prenatal psychology, where they make a case that violence during birth um, may predispose to violent actions later on. We'll never prove this and one way or the other. And the, sometimes those uh, emotional issues do not surface until later on. And also hard to read. The legacy's got to be there. Yeah, the problem is, again, if you Richard, I love you, but I've got some people out here. I remember there. my son was circumcised. They gave him something, and they brought him to me later, and they said he's going to be a little groggy, which he was. Yeah. He wasn't just now, went in there. How do you feel about that? I thought that was all right. I mean, he didn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't they just this. didn't in do the, it. In the new militant consumerism, and given what we've read about some hospitals today, there are not a few parents out there who don't want their infant to have any mind-altering, mood-altering, anything ingested. More, and so important, that's an, yeah. more important than that. Huh? Is, 30 know, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I know, obviously, we, didn't, we weren't thinking about that. Yeah, right. Right. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. I'm not speaking in regard to children, but I'm a nurse in a CCU unit. I mostly work with older people. And I'd say most males are circumcised. And I find, as being a nurse, it's a lot of trouble if you have a sick patient and they aren't circumcised because they can't clean themselves as well as an able-bodied person can. But as nurses, and we also have to uh, brush our patient's teeth and clean their toenails and do that. sometimes you do have trouble, say, catheterizing a patient that isn't circumcised. Sometimes we have a lot of trouble and you have to get a urologist in to do it. 
It's the same, it's equally difficult with uncircumcised men sometimes, depending on the patient. I think it depends a great deal on the patient and the penis. But aside from that, I think we can't put all the blame on doctors. We as parents don't have to give the power. We can say, what is this That's about? That's true. Should I, shouldn't That's I? That's true. We should have been more alert. But this is, we've only begun to, to take but that they don't power, take though. The facts either. They don't tell you the truth. Yes, ma'am. I agree with the nurse with older men because when they have to wear uh, catheter condoms, it's difficult getting the foreskin back without infecting it. And these people have to lie in bed and wear it for a long time. But so. that's certainly not a reason to, to do it to young babies. Hundreds of thousands yeah. of you know, baby boys. Yeah. Women are tough to catheterize also, and yet we're not advocating female circumcision, yeah. which is done in many places they've of never, the world. They've never uh, uh, adopted the procedure in um, European countries where men are also catheterized and they've never considered it a reason for uh, adopting the yes, procedure. Thank you. I have a short statement and a question for the doctor. The statement is that originally the uh, circumcision was a substitute for sacrificial bloodletting. That's the origin of the yes, literature. Yes. And this is found in Professor Homer Smith's book called Man and His Gods. My question for the doctor is what statistics do you have that Ar Arab and Jewish women have fewer incidents of uterine cancer? Yes, this is Thank a, um, it's cervical cancer was originally one of the reasons. We thought that women, because Jewish women have low rates of cervical cancer, so it said it must be the fact Jewish men are circumcised. It turns out not only is that changing now in Israel with increasing rates of cervical cancer, but circumcision status had nothing to do with it because cervical cancer will turn out to be a sexually transmitted disease. There's a virus we've identified, and that's where it comes from. Are you there, caller? Yes, I disagree with what he just said. In 1983, an epidemiological study was done across across the board and around the world, and it has shown that circumcised women who sleep with circumcised men, or I should put it the opposite, women who sleep with uncircumcised men, do in fact have a four to nine times greater chance of cervical dysplasia. Now, because of Pap smears, it doesn't go on to cervical cancer, but it is has been documented many times that no, there is... that's not true, and there have been four or five studies to refute that. Listen, we have the highest rates of cervical cancer in the world, in the United States, where all men are circumcised, so how can that be? Isn't smegma the collection of, uh, isn't that the bacteria which collects in the uncertainty? Smegma always comes up in a discussion <laughs> like this, you know? I mean, that's, smegma, why, I, that's he, why I'm here. I yep. mean, uh, he wanted to ask yeah. it, but he didn't have the courage. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk smegma. We have to deal with it. You're talking smegma, smegma now. <laughs> smegma is a word that has a negative connotation. Smegma are simply represents the secretions that normally form under the foreskin. There is an aesthetic issue. We're dancing around. Let's tackle it. A lot of women, because they're not used to it, find the uncircumcised penis less aesthetic because it has moisture. It has different tissues than they're used to. They're there's nothing that makes more smegma in terms of those terms than the female vagina. That's smegma, okay? That doesn't turn men off, and that's not a reason to do an operation on women. So aesthetically, it may take some adjustment, but nevertheless, there's nothing wrong with a, a little smegma. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're Great certainly guess. glad to clear that up. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm not sure I really know why someone shouldn't be circumcised. I, I heard someone start to talk about why not, and then we start talking about well, your sexual... What is your understanding as to why they should? For health reasons, because it is more cleanly, it's, it's better for the child. Now, let's address the health issues. We should say there is no health benefit. Every major medical organization will ascribe to that fact. Cleanliness... If you have soap and water, you don't have to worry about cleanliness. As a woman, what do you do about cleanliness? Your body takes care of itself. It's the same thing. This is the tissue we were born with. And as men, we have, a, we have a right to have our bodies left alone. If we want to do it as adults, it's okay. But I didn't have a choice. Richard didn't have a choice. And as men, and it's funny because this has been mostly a woman's issue, but men have got to stand up and say, hey, listen, I got a right to my body the way God gave it to me. Yes, except, first of all, I think that the comment that the woman over there made a few minutes ago is very important. As a parent, we must be the ones who make the decision for our child. Right. We must be the ones who are informed when that child is born. Right. As I was informed when my children were born and I made the decision, and my sons are circumcised, my daughter is not. Now, if, if she lived in another the, country, she would be. On the other hand, I think that it's very important that if you're going to say that as a man you should not be circumcised, you don't have the, the, the ability to make that decision when you're that infant, so you have to... It's the parent's choice. The parent has but to... But that's what they're trying to say. But then tell me, why shouldn't I circumcise Because it hurts. 
Well, not only that, 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 there's a now? function. The foreskin does, in fact, have a function. First of all, during infancy, the foreskin and the glands are, are um, connected by a common membrane, and the foreskin is not retractable in infancy. In fact, it was one of the problems that we have with doctors who don't know how to care for the new child, and we'll, we'll force that foreskin back. How perfect Mother Nature is not to um, make these two s structures separate. So while the child is in diapers and urinating and defecating on himself, the, the foreskin protects that very sensitive gland. More importantly, you may not have that right. And if I can introduce uh, Trudy, and her issue here is, constitutionally, you as a parent do not have a right to allow unnecessary surgery in your child. If you're Chinese, you can't bind their feet, you can't cut off their pinky if your religion says so. You can't even have them donate a kidney. If they were 13 and their sibling were dying of kidney disease, you don't have the right to consent for that child because this is unnecessary. And that right may be something... And, and is that the up. basis of your lawsuit? Mm -hmm. That's the basis of my lawsuit. We're really questioning the right of a parent. My son is asking, it's his, it's his lawsuit. Does the parent have the right to give permission to have a healthy portion of his body removed for no medical reason? All right. The music means we're long here, but let's understand where this is. You have been defeated in lower courts, have you not? Superior and appellate, yes. California? California, right. Uh, and where are you now? What level? We've just submitted um, our uh, case to the Supreme Court. Of California. of California. And you're going all the way if you have to? Right. <laughs> Can you imagine them? Will they grant cert? to a circumcision case. The problem is they're not addressing the issue. I mean, they, they have not addressed infant rights. They, they, when, when they give their response, they respond to the fact that the parent has the right to give permission for surgery on their child. And, and they don't mention no. anything about for no medical reason. And we'll be back in just a moment. Circumcision, most uh, unnecessary, oft-repeated, unnecessary surgery in uh, the United States. That's the, that's the wrap. In the view of, I guess we have to say, most of the medical profession. Why don't I have a what? I truthfully feel that you have a very biased panel up here. You do not. Well, where have you been? I've been... Tell me, tell me, what you mean? I think the main thing is that maybe the medical profession is the wrong people to be doing a circumcision. Who should be doing it? Amoyle, who is a religious person who is trained and has been doing this for years and years. And truthfully, if the medical profession can't handle it properly, maybe it has to be resorted back to well, the I oil. understand your anger. I'm Jewish, okay. too. And I okay. understand. And I'm the first to tell you, I know something, you're partially right. Moyles very often do a better job hey. than a lot of surgeons. Hey, yeah. I don't agree with this young lady because uh, even though the person is religious, uh, they don't know as much as a doctor. And even if they do many, I don't think it's proper for them to be doing these things to little children. You want in this? Yes. Uh, well, where is all this anger that's unexpressed here? All right, well, all right. I'm not Jewish, but I elected to have my son have a circumcision. And it was done by a staff doctor. It was done beautifully. Really? He healed lovely. Yeah, when but... you're an infant, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> How do you know? I mean, can you spot a beautifully done circumcision? Because I was there. You were there. All right. yeah. And my two grandsons all were right. also there. Yes, yes, ma'am. I just want to say that my point was not a religious point of view. I'm just saying that if well, the moil is the proper one to do it, that that's the one who should do but, but it. But it shouldn't well, be done at all. If it's not a religious point of view, why do it at all? That's the question. That's not my question. My question was, if you feel that the medical profession can handle the procedure properly... He didn't say that. He said there are a lot of people out there who are... Some are like talk show hosts. Some are better than others. You know what I mean? <laughs> Supposed to be what? In eight days. In if eight the days. child is healthy, yes. Yeah. But did you see him strap that kid down? Doesn't that bother you a little bit? What's the matter? What's the matter? Uh, I'm. All, I agree with the last woman who spoke. Uh, I feel that the panel is biased. That it's all. Uh, you all want. The, you want this circumcision, don't you? It's not that. I feel that there should be expert opinion on the panel who can speak uh, uh, in we the are opposition. We all experts, ma'am. We all are experts, but believe you're me. all experts in one point of view. We I didn't are. start out like that. When my it sons is were true. We do, not, I didn't, uh, we do not have a cheerleader for circumcision on this panel. Yes. I'd like to address this to uh, Richard. Now, he, he drew a diagram showing the showing the circumcision. I've, the I've reverse witnessed, circumcision. Yeah. As a Jewish person, I've witnessed many many circumcisions the baby by the way is in a little pain momentarily the rabbi usually puts a little drop That's of wine true. on his tongue it's not and it possibly is better 
but the idea of a double incision in the scrotum, I have never heard of anything like that. <laughs> well, and, uh, let me say, I, all that happens is the, the, the doctor, the doctor creates a tunnel in between the first and second layer. Well, just because you haven't heard of it, sir, doesn't mean it doesn't exist, because there are some 30 men who went before me who had the procedure done, and there are hundreds of men. I get letters. I can't tell you how many letters you know I get. You know this is a reverse doctor. circumcision. You know about this. You know, maybe, we, maybe this is confusing. He was circumcised as an infant, and this procedure returns the foreskin to its original place with the help of surgery and a healing process which has the penis... It doesn't return, the, it doesn't return the foreskin to its original place. The foreskin went into the wastebasket. They had to use other tissue to replace it. Yeah. What I'm confused about, and perhaps this doctor and nurse can explain, when my son was born, I didn't believe in circumcision. He wasn't circumcised. But there were a lot of problems. There was infection. And so at the age of three months, he was circumcised. Now, I went right there. I was there with them. Probably and you were told to off. retract the foreskin, or either that, or often the doctors will, in fact, tear that tissue, which is the normal No, what uh, I'm adherence. saying is, as the doctor explained that the circulation was cut off, they put a clamp on it. He did not cry. He did not scream. I brought him home. Perhaps it was a little discomfort, a minimum of bleeding. He healed up, and he's a grown man now, and he has a healthy sex life. So I don't think it has That's to fine. be torture all the time. I would say to you that I received literally hundreds of letters from men around the country. We're talking nuclear engineers. We're talking doctors, lawyers, the whole bunch of them. And I get letters. Marilyn gets letters constantly. Men out there are not angry about this issue, but they feel dysfunction. The letters say to me things like, I wish it had never been done. I feel like part of my body was violated. I'm 35 years old and I've been celibate for seven years. These types of things because of the circumcision problem. We've yeah. had over a thousand requests for information now from men in the last six months, over a thousand requests for information from men who either are sexually dysfunctional or feel a loss of self-esteem because part of their body was cut off without their consent. And, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for waiting. Go ahead. Okay. I'm 56 years old. I, was, I had a circumcision done three months ago in Far Rockaway St. John's Hospital. What happened to me was that the tip of my, of, of, of my penis, the skin, yeah. was sh uh, shrinking on me, where I could not urinate to the point anymore, and where I could not roll the skin back to clean myself properly. It was impinging on you. And also, my sex uh, drive was just gone from there. It was unbearable for, bearable for me to have sex. Right. So I just ha uh, Well, so how, is it, are you, how is it now? Are you all right now? It's fantastic now. The worst part about it was I went in the morning at 8 o'clock yeah. in the morning, and I was out the next day. Hey. Uh, listen. Yes, go ahead. Listen, we can only speculate on the line that's forming at uh, St. John's in Far Rockaway. They did a terrific job there um, on me. The worst part is trying to put your pants on afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> that's the worst part. Um, now I forgot what I wanted to ask. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, how much was it? How much was it? Yeah. Five hundred dollars. And 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 did you have a general or a local? I had a, a a general. I bet you did. I had a general, and that was. I'll easy. tell you, there that's what I'd have. That. I'd have a real general. Right. <laughs> they can wake me up next year from this. Uh... Well, I feel great now. Most yeah. men will go to that problem, but. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Okay. Isn't it very possible that a lot of uh, men would use circumcision as an excuse for their impotency? <laughs> I beg your pardon. I don't know. If the I would say to you, if the sensation was not there, yes, it's not. Uh, it's not that they're right. saying that. And we don't mean to pretend to be cavalier about what is. Yeah. This to many individuals a very serious. It's very hard for I, uh, yeah. people to uh, realize. Listen, we have uh, we have not discussed female circumcision. Uh -huh. Is there such uh -huh. a thing? There is such a thing. There are 90 million girls a year are circumcised by in Muslim countries, no, uh, Ethiopia, that. Djibouti, uh, the Sudan, Nigeria, and so forth. Um, there are two different kinds of circumcision. One is the Sunnah circumcision, where they just remove all the clitoris. This, of that's course, a clitorectomy. That's a, a clitoridectomy, it's called. And there's a pharaonic circumcision, where not only the uh, clitoris is removed, but also the ma labia minora and majora. And then the child is sewn up, leaving a small opening for the passage of urine and menses. To and, ensure and, virginity. And to sh assure her virginity. My feeling, of course, is if you uh, castrated all men, you'd be more, more sure that the women would be... Would be um, <laughs> 
the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the pain the night of of um, her wedding night and with penetration and her screams that assures the villagers that in fact well, these women are this are, is are are virginal and and what's one of the things that's happened of course are these, some of these women are coming to this country and doctors here are having a difficult time delivering them with their, with babies and women die of course in those countries. In the obstetrical journals I'm seeing now reports of how to deal with women women who have been circumcised in other other countries. Yes, ma'am. Well, I just want to say that I'm Jewish and have been brought up such that if I ever had a little boy, I would always have him circumcised because it's part of the religion. But after coming here today and hearing all this, that it's not anything to do with the child, and seeing that tape, I don't care how many experts you have either way, to see a baby like that cry, forget it. I better Wonderful. have all girls Good for you. That's, that's it. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I'll get to you in a moment. Briefly, please. Yes, ma'am. The fact of the matter is, we've said before that this practice has been denounced by all medical groups, including the Surgeon General yes. himself. And all countries. And all other countries. Yes, yes. We're the only country. Well, excuse me. I have two sons. I mean, excuse me, one son. I'm expecting another child. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hoping it's a son. But if this baby is a son, I will circumcise him because of my religious purposes, regardless of that movie of anything or anything because else. Because of your religion? For my religion, that's right. What is your religion? Because Muslim. Uh huh. That's right. Uh huh. What bothers me about the woman over here who said that after this show yes. she would not have her baby circumcised is everyone is making, I think, decisions based on emotions. This woman up here said the law case with uh, her infant. She feels like her infant has rights. The other people are saying that they're afraid it hurts the baby. I would like to see. Uh, on the panel, maybe someone who's for circumcision, like a doctor. Statistics: What kind? Of, what's the rate of infection if it's not done? I would rather make a decision based on facts and long term. This is the most what's commonly be performed procedure in America, and there are no statistics. There has been an estimated um, a rear admiral, a former rear admiral in the Navy, estimated 200 babies a year die from this procedure. Two baby, baby boys lost their penises in Atlanta, Georgia last year, and this is not uncommon. But there are no statistics kept. We have but, no idea. But two men, what about the two men? One in the beginning of the show who called up and said he was yes. getting all these infections, yes. and you then the older man who had problems. Rarely. I'd like to see that the happens doctor rarely. Say. Why circumcise 99 little boys for that one man? He can deal with it when he but grows up. But you do make a point. We thank you for... You think what? I think it's the parents' They choice. do, too. And we'll be back in just a moment. No, sir. I'm telling you this. If you're not a member of uh, some politically active group today, it's not because there aren't enough of them out there. Here are uh, some very, very educated, caring, politically active people who are against what they perceive to be the most oft-repeated unnecessary surgery in the world. Post Office Box 2512, San Anselmo, California. The zip is 94960. Please send a self-addressed stamped envelope. Mike Gordon, is a you're active as well, are you, Mike? Yes, you I'm wanted to make a brief statement on uh, that. Yeah, I'm president of the Circumcision Information Center of New York, Incorporated. Uh, in New York State, uh, it so happens it's against the law for a medical professional to uh, perform circumcision. Without the consent of the parents? No. He's not allowed, according to New York State law, unprofessional conduct laws, Board of Regents. Well, Mike, you're going to make this real complicated. Right. It's, it's, it's misleading to suggest that circumcision is against the it's law. It's not misleading. The law states ordering of treatment or use of treatment facilities not warranted by the condition of the patient are prohibited I in see. New York State. And that is, that is essentially the claim that... Uh, For that, no medical reason. Yeah, right. I get it. I get it. It, it is against the this law. Is, this is already in the code, and you're using this existing law to disallow the procedure without consent. Well, that's the state of New York. Uh, it's, it's not a matter of consent. It's a matter of, of medical professionals performing Doing a medically unwanted amputation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Phil, Thanks. I, thank you, Mike. I have a question. If 200 million American men have been circumcised, and now the medical profession is saying this is unnecessary, isn't that the biggest medical scandal of the century? <laughs> well, uh -huh. uh, how, how, much, how, how much million a year are you figuring on this? $200 million a year. Are you there, caller? Hi. Hi, I have two sons, one circumcised, one not. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you, it has affected my whole family. How do you mean? It, one is very well adjusted, the one that just so happens to be not circumcised, and the one that is circumcised um, is not. And they, and, and they think it's because of that? <laughs> I think it is. I certainly think it show is. Me a, show me a little brat and I'll show you a kid who's been circumcised? No, 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 I'm not being mentally adjusted. <laughs> adjusted about their... their personal pot. They what? They're, my oldest is not, it has not adjusted to his personal pot. 
very well. Oh, I see. He has a self-conscious about his genitalia. Yes. I Does get not it. like to be looked at or touched. And he is the circumcised male? He's the, yeah. I see. That's unusual. And I have to say, in the future, by the way, in the West, it's 50-50 right now. So the circumcised man will be the oddity in the locker room of the future. As of today, 50-50. In the East Coast, 65 30, I go to the 60, math 60, 40. 60, 40. On, on where? Most, in the East Coast, most little boys are still circumcised. In the West Coast, it's 50-50 right now. Are you there, caller? Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to say that I'm very irate about it. I'm of the Jewish faith, and this procedure is done, has been done for over 2,000 years. I know many boys and men that were circumcised. My husband was, my yes. son was, and my grandson was circumcised yes. in we're our not questioning home. that. We're yes. not questioning Don't miss that. his yeah. point. If this is a religious conviction of yours and the family's, no one is suggesting you shouldn't have that freedom. He wonders, however, if other, if other rituals of orthodoxy in any religion have been lost along the way, why should uh, circumcision be treated any differently? That's his question. Well, anyway, hello? Yeah. Well, the point is that there was no physical or emotional problems afterwards. My grandson was circumcised in my house. He was not strapped down. No baby that I know that was circumcised was strapped down. The proceed Now, stay tuned and see men over 40 who are desperate to get married. As Sally finds out if the biological clock moves as fast for men. On Sally Jesse Raphael, next on WOKR 1340 Turbo Wagon by Bull.